Good morning. Good morning, everybody, and thank you very much for, for the invitation. And uh, it's really an honor also to be part of this, uh, of this panel. Um, I, I will maybe go back to a bit of data, not to, to repeat too much what has been said until now, but just to put things in perspective. Um, so cancer is a, is a, causes one in four deaths. This was said by Commissioner for Health, Teda Kirakidis, this morning. It's a second place of leading causes of death, illness, and disability in many European countries. And if you just look at 2020 data, it's 2.7 million people in the EU that has been diagnosed with cancer, 1.3 million of individuals that have died from it and it's estimated to increase by 24% uh, by 2035. And the overall cost and economic impact of this exceed 100 billion uh, euro annually. Out of this, 13% uh, of cancer diagnosed annually are attributed to carcinogenic infections such as viruses and bacteria. And among uh, most important infections associated with infections related cancers, or HPV, human papillomavirus, and hepatitis B. Human papillomavirus uh, infections causes cervical, vaginal, vulvo, anal, penal, oropharyngeal cancers in both men and women, and hepatitis B lead to liver cancers. If you just look at Europe, for instance, you, you, you will have 53,000 new cervical cancer annually attributable, attributable to HPV infections and 60,000 annual deaths attributable to, to liver cancers. And if I, I just looked at, at this uh, statistic for, for Greece, just for cervical cancer, for example, it's, it's about 700 new cervical cancers annually in Greece. Uh, which actually leads uh, the cervical cancer to the tenth leading cause of female cancer in Greece, and the first most common uh, female cancer in women aged between 15 and 44. Uh, and what is important is, in fact, both of these infections, hepatitis B as well as HPV, can be effectively prevented with primary prevention, such as vaccination. Only vaccination can really, really claim preventing effectively those cancers uh, with short-term evaluated effectiveness. Highly effective vaccines against hepatitis B have been available for several decades, and many European countries offer hepatitis B vaccination in their routine immunization programs for children and adults, and the efficacy of effectiveness of HPV vaccination and protections against HPV infections, genital wards, and high-grade cervical lesions, including a reduced risk of uh, invasive cervical cancer, has been established. So vaccination is really a concrete, well-evaluated primary prevention, which significantly um, which has a significant public health value that can only be achieved, only be achieved with the implementation of vaccination programs with the right support, the right investment, the infrastructure to ensure the performance of the programs. And when we talk about performance of the programs, it's about high compliance by the population translated in high vaccination coverage rates. And yet inequity and discrepancy discrepancies persist in Europe for both HPV and hepatitis B vaccines. And this must be addressed because it does bear a higher load of HPV-related cancers, in particular cervical cancer, uh, incidence and mortality. And in relation to hepatitis B, they, they remain actually a sizable, unprotected cohort of adults who were not vaccinated in connection with childhood vaccination programs. And therefore, there, there is still suboptimal coverage rate for risk-based recommendation across Europe. If I just give an example, a much more concrete example of, of the situation, HPV vaccination is available since 2006. The post-marketing authorization has been delivered for these vaccines in 2006. So more than 15 years later, um, and in most of the European countries, in your, uh, European countries, they hardly manage actually to reach relevant and significant coverage rate to protect their targeted population. And most of the time, there is no timely monitoring of the vaccination coverage rate for this vaccination. Unfortunately, when we look at Greece, for example, uh, although the, the data are not easy to find, but the HPV vaccination coverage rate is also low, estimated to be around 30 to 40%, and the HPV prevalence remains high. 
Lack of resilience of immunization programs is also important to address because if we look at what happens with COVID-19 pandemic, for instance, uh, it, do, it did create a significant disruption of the uh, routine immunization in children, but also in adolescents and adults. And we have seen uh, in Greece, notably with regards to the drop in the HPV vaccination coverage rate, which was already not optimal, a drop by 40 to 45 percent in the vaccination. So he has a beating, the EU beating cancer plan, which sets clear targets for HPV vaccination with 90% coverage rate for girls and increasing vaccination for boys by 2030 uh, towards eliminating HPV related cancers on one side, but also on improving access to and uptake of vaccines against hepatitis B in order to reduce living cancer represent a unique opportunity for the elimination of vaccines preventable cancers in the European Union. In addition to that, the, the cancer plan really states that dedicated union funds will support member states' efforts to extend routine vaccination against HPV for boys and girls in order to eliminate cervical cancer and other cancers caused by HPV. And this is completely linked with the objective set by the WHO uh, that calls for the elimination of cervical cancer by 30, 2030. Also, the recently announced joint action on vaccination to support member states um, to increase public understanding and awareness of HPV and promote vaccination uptake, again, show the willingness of the EU to support the member states in the implementation of vaccination program uh, um, against infections related cancers. So these actions really contribute to key targets of the cancer plan to eliminate cervical cancer by vaccinated against HPV. So the member states action here is critical. It is critical that the member states update their national cancer control plan and strategy to reflect the European Beating Cancer Plan's objectives and targets make use of all available EU funding instruments to implement actions at national level, to prioritize a life course routine immunization, to include and support vaccination, vaccines against preventable disease and cancers. So life course is going beyond the, the pediatric vaccination and really ensures that we support adequately the uh, adolescent and adult immunization program ensure sustainable performance, including through robust data systems in the implementation of the public health measures from prevention to care against uh, HPV-related cancers and disease. We need data, we need uh, uh, timely monitoring of, of the uptake, we need to have timely monitoring of the, of the disease as well, and uh, robust data systems is critical. Thank you and very last, much. And we also need to engage sustainably in the fight against hepatitis and deliver on the primary prevention and goal of vaccine uh, against hepatitis B. And if I just conclude, because here is where I wanted to conclude, uh, the elimination of infections related to cancers is within the reach of all countries. And through the widespread uh, access to hepatitis B and HPV vaccination, screening and treatment, Boys and girls who are born today could live to see a world free of these cancers, and it is a unique opportunity. I put here, thank you very much.